What's up guys? We're finally back with some two-stroke content. It's been a minute, been working with a lot of four-stroke engines, kind of tired of it. Time to use something that makes some real power. So today we're gonna be swapping in my homemade twin cylinder 100cc two-stroke engine that I built out of two pocket bike motors that I've kind of done way too much work on to really, you know, excuse. But anyway, this is my homemade twin cylinder two-stroke engine. Um, and we're going to put that on my mini bike today. Hopefully by the end of this video, we have a running, driving, wicked two-stroke mini bike. So um, originally, the only other video I have of this engine really explaining it is me putting, I don't even have a video of me explaining it actually. Um, I just have a really vague video of me assembling it onto a scooter. And that was the original plan. And the only reason that's my only video is because I lost all of the footage that <laughs> I had of me like actually designing or putting together this engine. Anyway, um, so the reason I want to do it on a mini bike is because I want to run a variator, like a scooter variator, except I I've planned out a bunch of this stuff. Um, let me get the camera a little closer, show you what I've got all up here, and we'll talk about how this is going to work. Okay, um, to sort of explain, talk about what my plan is for this. Um, I'll make this short and sweet so we can get right into it. Uh, it's kind of stuck on there, but I'm using another clutch center because I used um, two of these clutch pieces to connect the crank crankshafts of these separate engines together. They're just timed 180 degrees apart. But I'm going to use this clutch center, and we're going to end up adapting this variator from a scooter onto this engine. That will give us basically the same thing as a torque converter, you know, like your mini bike or go-kart torque converter, which actually we're going to be using the rear pulley off of and a jack shaft because normally on the rear pulley of... A scooter clutch is built in this doesn't have that so we're gonna i don't know i'll show you guys later i kind of want to get really or i kind of really want to get straight into putting this together but there's kind of a bit to explain here or not really anyway um we're gonna be putting this twin cylinder two stroke on there this is two pocket bike motors that i've got some some af18 um honda dio intake manifolds on that have much better reads. I've done some custom two-piece adapter plates. These are some PWK 21 millimeter carburetors, some cool looking pod filters, uh, high compression cylinder heads, full circle crankshafts. The ignition setup is actually, uh, I don't know if you can even see that, but it's actually a homemade flywheel and a, a piece that I machined on my little CNC to mount these pickup coils to. Um, <sighs> is it running off of two DC CDIs for a two-stroke Yamaha jog scooter? And then they're each being powered from uh, two 3S LiPo batteries. And that seems to do okay for Spark. But anyway, let's get straight into it. We're going to get this jack shaft set up onto the mini bike frame and then this will all kind of make a bit more sense of how I'm going to put this variator set up on here and how I'm going to adapt it to the mini bike frame. All right, so like I may or may not have mentioned, the uh, actual engine itself will not have a clutch on it. By the way, I apologize. I've been, I reviewed some of the footage and I, I don't know, this microphone, I, it's terrible. Anyway, um, we're going to be using this jack shaft and we're going to be running our clutch on the jack shaft itself. So in order to do that, actually, I already welded these tabs on here earlier. Uh, if I would have waited until I would have started filming, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So um, I'm going to start throwing this jack shaft on there and you'll kind of understand how this will work. All right, so hopefully now that this is on here, it's starting to make a little bit more sense. So the motor is going to be spinning this rear pulley. 
This rear pulley is going to be spinning the jack shaft. And this has a centrifugal clutch on it, just like uh, that would mount straight to the crankshaft of your normal go kart motor or mini bike motor. Um, and so, as this front engine spins this rear pulley, it will make this clutch work. And that's what's going to drive this, uh, drive the rear wheel and allow us to still have the uh, variating gear ratio, like a torque converter or a variator on our scooter. Um, and so, I, I do realize that with it being back here, it's going to engage at a much higher RPM than it's intended to. I think in stock, uh, at, on like a regular mini bike motor, uh, this would engage at about 2000 RPM, but on this, uh, back here being driven off this pulley, it'll engage at about 6,000 RPM, which sounds pretty aggressive, but actually for a two stroke motor, if you want it to really get off the line, um, that's actually perfect. That's what I set most of my two stroke scooters to about 6,000 RPM clutch engagement. So that's going to be perfect. So, um, I'm going to cut this chain, actually get it on there all the way. Um, we'll eventually come up with a little chain tensioner set up on the bottom, but should be fine for now. And then we'll get to mounting this engine in here. Now that we've got the jack shaft all mounted on our mini bike, the next step is going to be to focus on getting this engine actually mounted on there. I've got the variator pulley kind of just mocked up on the crankshaft for right now so we can get our belt alignment right. Um, I went ahead oops, and I cut some eighth inch flat bar that we're going to weld onto this. Uh, this is just an in engine riser plate for a Predator 212 or a mini bike. It's so you can put a torque converter on your mini bike, but I'm actually going to use it to lift this engine up and uh, mount this to it. We're going to weld the eighth inch flat bar to here. Go ahead and use this as a template to drill the holes through and get that lined up so we can actually bolt the holes or bolt the engine to the plate as well as through the eighth inch flat bar. Should be strong enough to hold everything just fine. And then I just had to cut this corner off so it cleared the clutch on the jack shaft. But I think I'm going to go ahead and get this mocked up and lined up on here. Or actually, I'm going to clear the paint off of here and then line it up on here. And we're going to get these this flat bar welded on here, transfer, transfer our holes to this as well, and mount this engine in the mini bike. The engine mount plate is all finished up now. Uh, ignore how terrible my welding is. I'm using a 10 year old Harbor Freight welder that has definitely been left out in the rain several times, but it will hold, um, especially since the bolts should be, are gonna be running through the bottom of the actual engine mount plate. So now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mount the engine in the frame, run the belt. We don't have the variator pulley uh, fully finished yet. We'll go through how I'm gonna actually get this to function properly. It just kind of mocked up for now so we can get the belt uh, at the right length and tension and alignment. So let's go ahead and get this mounted in the frame and see what it looks like. The engine is now mounted, as you can see. Looks pretty good in there, actually. I got the pipes on there, and luckily, this uh, rear bolt hole right here lines right up with the old fender mount hole, so stuck a bolt right in there. Solid enough to hold the whole bike on there, but <clears throat> just gotta do something for this other pipe on here. I uh, stuck a different flywheel on there. I uh, might pull it back off, pull this cover back off and show you guys later, but that's just something we can have. 
a pull start now. Um, so at this point, we've got some stuff to finish up. We got to put a gas tank on here and, and run some fuel lines. I got to change the jets in one of these carburetors because I stuck it on a different scooter. And then uh, we got to deal with this kind of spaghetti mess of wiring here. I don't know if you guys can see all that, but we gotta get all this tucked up in the frame somewhere, zip tied, as well as a place to put the batteries. Um, after we do that, we'll actually, well, after we do that, we'll go ahead and fire the bike up so you guys can see what this twin cylinder sounds like. It's actually, I'm really excited to do that myself because I, I've ran this on a different ignition setup, but I have not ran this on this uh, CDI ignition setup. So I'm excited to see the results and how well that works. Um, so let's go ahead and keep moving along. I'm going to get this wiring harness tucked up and stick a gas tank on here, run some fuel lines, do the jets, uh, finish making a mount for this exhaust. And yeah, we'll get this all knocked out. I got the wiring harness routed up into the frame. CDI is mounted up under the seat. Um, so there's access to these battery plugs for the lipos. And then I got our fuel line ran, gas tank mounted. And at this point, the only thing I have left to do on this bike is to flip it around and build a mount for this other expansion chamber to the frame. And I've already got this piece of flat bar bent. I'm just gonna flip it around, make a mark where I need to cut it, weld it to the frame, and at that point, we should be able to just throw gas in here and start this engine up and hear what this bike sounds like for the frame. <coughs> I got this little exhaust bracket welded on here now. Uh, took a couple minutes to do that, and now this is just as solid as the other side. The only thing we've got left to do on this really is to finish this front pulley. I had it mocked up on there earlier while I was getting the engine mounted so I could get the belt distance correct. Um, but basically, um, I want to build a third bearing support for the outside of that since this crankshaft has such a small amount of end up, just not much there to it. So. I'm going to build an outer third bearing support for the pulley so that we don't end up snapping the end of this off or wobbling it out and I get smacked in the leg with it. So, um, But before I do that, I really want to get this thing running and hear what it sounds like for the first time. So it's a little bit too late in the evening now, but first thing in the morning, luckily probably in about 5-10 seconds for you guys, I'm going to throw some gas in here. We're going to fire this thing up and see what it sounds like. <laughs> All right, so here goes the first start on the mini bike. Got gas in it, got uh, the batteries all hooked up, everything should be good to go. Let's see what happens.
Seems like it's running on only one cylinder right now. Started on two. Alright guys, so I really didn't want to make this a two-part video, but it's going to be a two-part video. Kind of messed up. Um, there was one line where I said, uh, I think this. I uh, stuck a different flywheel on there, and that was a mistake. And I knew it was a mistake, because I knew I had a problem with the stock flywheels backing off of the crankshaft and exploding, and that's what happened. So. And of course, I wasn't filming when that happened. So, uh, yeah. Um, we're going to go back through next episode. You guys get a closer look at how I, how I uh, built this twin cylinder motor. And maybe you'll find that a lot more interesting. I don't know. Um, but we're going to get this thing knocked out next video. Thanks for checking it out. Appreciate it. If you like what you saw, comment down below. Like, do something. Interact with this in some way. I appreciate it. Have a great day, guys. Also, yes. It's been a minute since I filmed that and filmed this. Takes a little, uh, takes a little time to build that motivation back up when a project uh, self destructs sometime. But I got it. We're good. We're gonna do this. Have a great time, guys. See ya. Thank you.